look who's back. Like he never left. The best show of the best shows has officially returned. Bigger, bigger, better, better, and much more athletic. For Cannon's sake is officially back. back. With no-nonsense commentary on entertainment, politics, and whatever else we want. And now, for your host, the frontman of Backwards, and founder of the Ripaverse, Mr. Eric July. What's up, what's up, everybody? I hope you are doing well. Thank you for joining us live on YouTube.com slash Young 59 for another episode of 4 Cannon Sake. I got a special one for you. Obviously, there's a little something going on. A little something, not too much. We just launched a new campaign. This is the first show back since that campaign has uh, been launched. Yaira number one is officially up for pre-order. You can go to ripperverse.com slash Yaira or just click on the campaign page. See all the goodies. So many different items. We'll go through those here in a bit, but I have to first thank each and every single one of you guys. We have hit over... And well, in 24 hours, fastest that we've ever done that, Yara number one hits a million. That's insane. And I appreciate y'all so much. And I had to personally, of course, thank you guys um, for that. I'm going to run through some information here before we bring in our guest for today. So bear with me just a little bit, if you don't mind. Let's first start here. Of course, Yara number one, as I was mentioning earlier, is off to a roaring start. Closing in on 8,000 total purchasers. We've sold over 13,000 books, almost 14,000, um, or that'll be the next milestone there. We're closing in also on 1.15 uh, there. I know everybody is looking forward towards these uh, benchmarks that we have. We've, we've started to announce some of these, the, the uh, behind the scenes for the IRA uh, trailer that we put out is over on our you know YouTube. Go check that out. That was the first one. The next one is this fan art contest that we have, and we have a bunch more. But again, thank you guys so much. Go get in. New Ripperverse magazine, everything, all the books. We have sold out of a couple of CGCs. However, we may be adding some stock. We always reassess those. I need to have a conversation with the sisters because we'll see. But look at that interior artwork, man. Titane Deborah is so good at what she does. I can't wait for you guys to read it. The announcement that I want to make for today, though, Y'all yeah, number one fan art contest is now live. This is my favorite part of these campaigns. We didn't do one for Alpha Core. We did one for Isom 1 and Isom 2, but we didn't do one for Alpha Core. So that is now live. It's going to end on the 23rd of April. So you got plenty of time. W- rewards are going to be very, very similar. You got cash rewards for all, well, for first, second, third, and fourth place. But the first one is the one that everybody's fighting for, and rightfully so. And that is you can get some long-term interior sequential work. It's up to it's worth up to uh twenty-three thousand. Yes, twenty-three thousand dollars. Michael Montanet was the uh, the winner of last year's or no, excuse me, the campaign for ISOM number two, that fan art contest. He won it. He's already well. I mean, I, I almost NDA'd myself and told you the project that he's working on, but he's working on a project. And he is a killer artist. So it's a great opportunity. It's also a fun way to get you guys uh, involved with everything. So the Yara number one fan art competition is now live. Go check that out if you have not already. And again, we appreciate your support and the love that you have shown for Yara number one. Okay. Now, without further ado, we have a special guest today. He's been on the show uh, many times before. We stream. It's almost like it feels like it's almost like every week or so uh, that him and I are on somebody's stream uh, together. You know, I love this man to death. Everything it is that he's done for folks uh, in our corner of the Internet is so very valuable. And, of course, he is killing it. So welcome, if you don't mind me, our guest, Mr. Gary from the Erotic. Brother, how you doing? Good. How are you? I am doing fantastic, man. I appreciate you taking some time and and joining us today. I know you're very busy, man. You're streaming nonstop, man. So for you to stop by for a little bit is always uh, it's always awesome, man. It's always fun. So there's a whole lot of catching up that we got to do because since the last time we talked, 
I think the last time we had you here, we were, I think we might have been talking about the Hollywood strikes at the time. Uh, now, I, I know you have been covering, keeping your you know, kind of hand on the pulse of the industry, that there had been for a little bit, and I don't know if it still is, if you can inform us, that there was another one maybe looming. Yeah, it's IATSE, not to be uh, confused with Nyatsi, but uh, or, or Yahtzee the game. It's it's uh, the the Teamsters essentially. So the huge huge union, I think a million and a half people, uh, the from craft workers to people who build sets. So the actual blue collar. Okay. So like my heart goes out to blue collar people because I w- I was you know one most of my life working, but um. I'm not a union guy, so screw them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but they actually have a leg to stand on. So I, I could totally see the producers caving to them because they sided with the, the WGA and the Film Actors Guild during the strike. So the WGA and the Film Actors Guild are going to be forced to side with them. And, and there's that one girl you saw like in all of my videos and every picket line. She's actually a teamster. She's okay. the head of the Teamsters. So she wasn't part of, of uh, the Film Actors Guild or the WGA. So, yeah, that was basically, we got your back. Now you're going to have to have our back. So if, and I think the vote is this month. No, the negotiations start this month. And I think the final vote would be in July. So they have a little time. Okay. But if they go on strike, Hollywood gets shut down again. Damn. Yeah, because th- those guys are very necessary for them to... Uh, do their job. So that is very, very uh, intriguing that yet another one is going to be sort of uh, uh, looming. But look, Hollywood is in this, uh, I'd say, rough spot. Maybe some people disagree with me. But with what's happening in gaming and what's happening. Uh, and look, well, gaming has for a while now, it's overtook Hollywood as far as like movies are concerned as the like number one kind of entertainment thing that people gravitate towards. Um, so, you know, whether you consider that their problem or not, I mean, that's just a reality. Now you couple that with the direction that Hollywood has been going uh, with their, uh, the, the content they've not only put out, but also with um, how a lot of the individuals within Hollywood seem to feel about the people that, um, pay for their product, um, if you will. So we talked a little bit, I can't remember what maybe it was on Real BBC, this whole like, are we on, did we already reach this sort of peak peak uh, era of, of the, at least with the quote unquote wokeness of it. So what is your position on that? Do you think there's more to come or, and I think this is, I, I don't want to answer the question for you, but I have a feeling that you're thinking more so at minimum from the audience, they're already over this. Yes, the audience is done. It, it, we are way past peak woke. I can't, I can't say Hollywood, woke entertainment. So many of us for years have been warning that this was coming for the things you love. They want to destroy the things we love. And, and because they don't, they, by the way, they, the activists, mm-hmm. the activists, they don't want us to be comfortable. Uh, so they start invading our, our, our leisure items, games, comics, shows, movies, anything uh and and we just talk about it in this fear and it has been dismissed for so long but the audience is way past it like today for example don't want to totally date this podcast but uh, we have a <laughs> very magical movie releasing <laughs> yes a very a very magical one uh, a very magical movie uh releasing which i think it really signifies that we're past peak woke because like nobody's even talking about it and this is the kind of movie that uh you, I think the critics will actually bash it now. But a year ago, they wouldn't have. Two years ago, they wouldn't have. It would have been 99% critic score, 2% audience score. And I, that, and and you're going to see that tide turning with the, the critics who are left, not saying they have integrity. They just want to keep their job. So they see the tide turning. But, yes, that, that time has passed. The audience is over it. They're not going to go see this movie. They're not going to go praise this movie. And YouTubers are just going to go clown it. But I think it is important to clown it because, my God, this is just a holdover. And we're going to get a lot of holders, particularly in gaming, you know, when certain games are still three years out that Sweet Baby Inc. just completely infiltrated and destroyed. And, and imagine how bad it's going to look in three effing years. Oh and it's blowing God. up. It's great. It's great to see Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, causing this ma- basic. Well, Dan Bass started Gamergate 2.0. Let's, <laughs> let's be real. Let's run down that story real quick. Yeah. Dan Vask Dan cut out a 
a stream, a gaming stream of heel versus babyface. Our yes. friend Az yes. posted it on his Twitter, so neither of them can make any money <laughs> off of it going viral, which is hilarious. <laughs> Oh fucking dad, man! <laughs> fucking dad, fucking dad, man! Oh, uh, we had him, we had him on not too long ago, by the way, and fucking idiot, man! That uh, shout out to Dan for he, I yeah, guess he, he, he Dan popped didn't this thing off. There was a GamerGate one, and he started GamerGate two. Yeah, he he did that. We all blame Dan. He's in the chat. Shout out Dan. We do blame Dan because he for sure popped this thing off. That got everybody at least uh, aware of what's happening, and um, you know you had these. And I think we've seen a little bit of it in Hollywood as well, where you get these kind of figures. Um, maybe they're wishy-washy. Maybe they kind of go where the wind goes, um, depending on the uh, uh, audience or uh, general opinion. When something is safe to talk about, then they talk about, oh, we can go, we could have, we could waste this whole entire podcast about now all of a sudden with Gamergate 2.0. A lot of people that seem to have bashed that culture are trying to get in on it and act like, well, they, they're newly kind of discovering that this has been an issue as if, to your point, there's been a lot of people in our sphere that have uh, uh, been talking about. But this that whole thing pops up, and now we're seeing that Sweet Baby Inc. is basically the kiss of death, is what I uh, uh, refer to them, because I don't see at, at this point how anybody, uh, anything that they've worked on is going to be used as some, like, marketing tool. Uh, I don't think that—I think, if anything, a lot of these companies are going to try to hide their, their presence, um, uh, it, it, because at this point— if someone knows that they worked on your project, and granted, there are other Sweet Baby Inks, but at this point, if they know that you're working on their project or that, that Sweet Baby Ink is working on that project, they're out. They're more than likely out. For, for better or for worse, fair or unfair, they are out, which I think speaks to your point that an audience at minimum is, is over this. But considering the cycles of, of Hollywood as well as game development, and this stuff takes years. There's a lot of stuff that has to come out over the next few years. I guess that's what's going to make it very fun with probably movies as well as uh, as games that are going to come out that have that kiss of death that are going to age so very poorly and they're going to be dead uh, on arrival. And it's not like they have the ability to pivot. I think we've discussed that before um, as well. This is what it is. So do you see that there's going to be a – I mean, look, I think you guys have talked about gentlemen. As far as uh, what's, what's is that on Netflix, right? The yes. Sh- okay. So that's on. Do, do you feel like those are market corrections or outliers? It's hard to say right now. Okay. It, it's hard. I, I I I think it could possibly be a correction. Okay. I think that that uh, it, it turned around fast enough to where it's possible. To where they saw a success of a gentleman movie, which was just a normal Guy Ritchie mo- movie. Some would argue him returning to form, especially after Madonna and Aladdin. We won't talk about those things. Uh, but like The Gentleman is the best show I've seen since One Piece. It's a phenomenal show, and it's just a normal show. It's a normal show, drug dealers double crossing each other for eight episodes, and it's great. It's great. Uh, and I think when they see more successes like that, plus they're cheaper. These things are yes, way, these yes. are all locations, not a lot of CG. You just get some good acting, some good storytelling. And uh, uh, I was told yesterday by Chris Gore, a friend of Chris Gore, uh, a, a major screenwriter had said that there are no jobs. And every time a job comes up, it's getting 300 applicants Jesus. immediately. 300 <clears throat> so there are no jobs. So the good writers are going to get the jobs now. Now, the problem is, is what we've seen with uh, Sweet Baby Inc. is uh, the woke mind virus is terminal. Right. It's terminal cancer right. for entertainment. And it, it will be, it's impossible. Um, Grums, who's been like on top of this crap yes, on Twitter, has. just Shout great, out. Uh, responded to my tweet and, and he was right. He said, the, the rot runs deep. It just runs too deep. And when Elon took over Twitter and we found out that the FBI was working for That's Twitter insane, and the man. FBI That's and now insane. with the sweet bait with the, with uh, the Department of Homeland Security yes. kind of shadow backing, uh, uh, calling any th- anybody who, who criticizes that uh, Gamergate 2 is a harassment campaign uh-huh. like that. Thankfully, it's not 2016 anymore. 
and we have one social media platform that like all this stuff would have been banned and suppressed and it's not now and they can't and the other ones can't now too as much they still will but they can't do it as much because they got caught with their pants down yeah and you you don't think F- okay i'm just pure speculation here if, if the fbi worked in twitter you don't think they've worked in disney you don't think they've worked in That's a, a good at point. amazon you don't think they work at at, at meta at alphabet of course they do That's a good of point. course they do that is that uh, is they, a fantastic point and because they understand this they understand this is culturally important and they are pushing propaganda it's not like we haven't been saying this for years <laughs> That's what the okay. battles want. <laughs> then, then Matt Walsh, who looks like he wants to sell me like OxyClean, comes out and uh, says, "Oh, sh- well, we should just walk away. We should f- f- fuck you." <laughs> yeah, I like, dude. Like, whatever. I, I like some of the stuff he does, but his his takes on culture and gaming are culturally oh, they're terrible. Retar- retarded. They're culturally terrible. retarded. Yeah. So, you know what? I promise I won't talk about a conflict overseas, and you just don't talk about gaming, please. <laughs> that works for me. It works for him. But it should. No, but. You bring up such a such a fantastic point in that it it is a point that I know I've brought up. I've been bringing this up since my you know, early 2010s because I was focused on more on music then. And I would say, and it was it was always like pulling teeth, hurting cats, whatever analogies that you want to use. When I'm like, bros, the battle is not necessarily political in the literal sense, as in like it's just going to go through government. As Breitbart himself said, culture is on the downstream. Excuse me, politics on the downstream of culture. Of culture, yep. So you got to focus on that if you are to change the political landscape. For a very long time, including maybe especially folks that are on the right wing, right, had neglected culture. Hell, in some cases, demonized hell. Some of them still did. I mean, a lot of folks in our sector went at, you know, Trump's neck, rightfully so, when he said the dumb shit about video games, right? Mm, yep, yep. Um, it's, it's, it's like that, again, cultural inept, culturally inept is more so what it is that they, they are. And I think with this whole gaming thing has really popped some th- stuff off. It's become too big to ignore, but it is interesting to see. I did see uh, Walsh's video this uh, morning talking about this whole Gamergate uh, uh, thing. But for the most part, outside of, again, some outliers who have shown some love to folks in our in our sector, the Benny Johnsons of the Benny world, Johnson. um, you know, have been disconnected. They think they think what we're doing is pointless. They they uh, they think that uh, it's childish. They think all of these different things. And um, now because it's uh, more it's expedient right now, and the folks that have been on top of it were right yet again. Uh, if I can expect them now to think of this as something that is worth talking about. Nonetheless, the problem of this, this uh, it is a cultural rot. It does run deep. It is part of the leadership is a video that we're going to walk. Uh, we're going to look at here later that speaks to that. It's it, it runs very deep, which is why I don't necessarily have an answer, because I want to believe maybe if I'm being an optimist. That a lot of the, if you get an outlier, let's say in comics, right? People like this Ultimate Spider-Man thing that's happening. Yep. They like uh, uh, Transformers, though. I don't know if they're going to like it so much now that Kelly Thompson apparently is going to be a part of this uh, thing uh, now. So, But because of that, because exactly of that, right? Okay, hey, we got, we're off to this great start. Let's go get Kelly Thompson involved. <laughs> I, I have a hard time, a very hard time believing that it is a correction. And not just we stumbled across what works and it slipped through. You you talked with the Saskas uh, before. We talked about this yesterday. Saskas did no restraints play. To me, yes. arguably, if not of all time, uh, and I know I'm speaking a lot to that, it's got to be up there as far as runs of Black Widow, the best pertaining to that character, okay? Just Black Widow. Setting motherfucking pedophiles on fire. Mm-hmm. And then we, you know, I talk, we talked to them and they're like, that basically snuck by. Like it was too late for them to pivot once they realized, wait a minute, we just put out a book where they're taking it to maybe some people that are among our ranks, <laughs> you know, maybe. Uh, and, you know, just uh, potentially uh, that are among our ranks. Do, do, do some digging in the comic book history. Yeah. Look at, look into our crumbs brother. Look into anybody from that old San Francisco scene. Yeah. You, you won't like what you find. Exactly. So. But that was an outlier, right? It snuck by, 
And I, I wonder if it's, did they sneak by? Um, is it one of those where, hey, we kind of stumbled across what works, but really as far as the attitude of the uh, the producers, the people that are uh, trying to make this material happen, be it TV or film, are they actually like knowledgeable on this enough to say, yeah, we fucked up, that was stupid, and if we want to actually stand a chance, we got to adjust? I, I don't have an answer to that, but I lean towards it's an outlier. I think that's, that they do not deserve the benefit of the doubt, Eric. So everything should be an outlier until we see it regular. Okay. Uh, that's, that's I, I can think I can believe Guy Ritchie. There's probably some base elements to that guy. I, I can believe that because all, his movies kind of say that. Uh, I won't say everything, but I could say that like he he definitely likes traditional storytelling and and uh, definitely likes, you know, just uh, some good old fashioned violence and doesn't isn't some PC weirdo. They even kind of joke about it in in the gentleman because you can't call gypsies anymore. Gypsies are called travelers, which is kind of funny. <laughs> uh, but th that being said, um, they're gonna do. Th they're never going to apologize. They're never oh, going to true. admit anything was wrong. People, it's like fucking Homer Simpson going in the hedge. They're all gonna do that, and then some of them are gonna go. I was always against cancel culture. I thought just this woke stuff just mm. became too much. That's bullshit. Don't <laughs> let them forget. Do not let them forget the Oscars until the very end was a very muted political affair because it was clear the producers said, shut the fuck up. Yeah. And then Jimmy Kimmel, because he's such an insecure little punk, <laughs> fell right into Trump's trap. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Trump yanked the entire industry's chain with one freaking tweet, with one little post, and they lost their minds and clapped and stuff. And you know what? You, you probably had some people back at the end, but you just told half your audience to F off again after you, you couldn't make it through a whole show. By the way, yeah, this Oscars flopping, and it did flop. It's the fourth lowest rated Oscars of all time. They're going, hey, it's a new high low. It's <laughs> That's essentially what they were trying to push. What they didn't tell you is the demographic, 18 to 49, you know, the people who actually buy stuff and they actually want watching this, was down 5%. What they didn't tell you was that was the first full, you know, they said it's the best, uh, highest rated Oscar since COVID. Okay, great. 2023 was the first year there was a full release slate of films. And it wasn't even, uh, uh, it didn't match 2019, by the way. Right. It was like 70% of 2019, but it was a full release slate. It was the year of the flop buster, but they had two major, major hits that came out in the same weekend, took over the entire year, and it bumped your old person rating up 4%. That's it. That's because insane. you decide to go back to Jimmy Kimmel and you have the same and people just like it's lost its lure. People don't care. People are over it. And it's just a tired model. <laughs> it so, is. And, and then you compare it to gaming. I'm looking at gaming's total revenue for 2023. Well, it, this is their, I think, uh, yes, the revenue highs. Uh huh. One hundred eighty four billion dollars. Jeez. For gaming. Uh, I'll I'll look at Hollywood's total revenue now. I'm pretty sure it's not uh, total revenue for. I don't know if I'll be able to search it this way. I'm pretty sure Hollywood. Um, da, 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 about fifty billion. Okay. Okay. And and we don't even know what that is. Yeah. Uh, that, that's mostly for movies. Uh, they have they aren't making any money off streaming. So that, I mean, do the math on that one. Right. It's like damn near four times, uh, you know, what Hollywood is making. Uh, and, um, and, and, and they dominate. So this thing blowing up right now is, is great. It's, and it's, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that uh, the dismissive tone that uh, Matt Walsh took towards the end. I mean, that's, that's how he feels. That's how they're never going to get it. And uh, yeah. as somebody who's not, a Republican. That's why you always lose. That's true. Why you always fucking lose. Get used to losing. That, that's true. Uh, and 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 that's why you've lost a bunch because you will not respect a giant section of our culture who are potential voters who give a shit and don't like being shamed and minimized and belittled. And I fucking hate that. I hate how the uh, access media has done that to fans. Gaming journalism has done it to fans. 
The corporate media has done it to fans. Hollywood has done it to fans. The comic industry has done it to fans. Everybody shits on the fans. The, your money. Your money. And that, that time is over. Yeah. Now the fans are walking away. And now the fans are becoming your competition. Yep. And they're going to crush you. Yes. They're going to absolutely crush you. You cannot beat them. Look, look. Like that's what makes this whole thing so interesting to me and why I believe that look or why I lean towards that. I don't think they quite get it. We are entering into this. Uh, well, we're already in it, but it doesn't get really, really spicy until the fall with the election, with the election. Right. And, and I think that's really going to be telling if we are, if we need something. Okay. To point to that says this is a market correction or they still own the same shit. I think that's when it, that's what we're going to see. Can they prevent themselves or stop themselves, right, from that trap they couldn't during the Oscars, right? And I don't I'm I'm not so sure that a lot of these creatives, using that term loosely, are going to be able to help themselves. Cuz I'd argue that in 2016, that was what made it even that's what sent people into a frenzy really across entertainment in general, the election of Donald Trump. That sent people to, uh -uh. I mean, it made people crazy. It made people fucking crazy. Not just to the point, oh, well, I like this man. I, I, I dislike him and I don't want to be president. No, no, no. We're talking that they felt that their creative endeavors, often based on properties uh, that have been around for a while, but they felt like that had to then be their vehicle to try to uh, tell people about themselves, to try to correct what they felt was wrong uh, in the world socially. So they're, their work became so, I mean, on the nose as it, as it possibly could get. And it sent people into a frenzy. Well, now we're, we're, we're about to go for the repeat. And, and that's why, that's, that'll be telling. I think that'll be telling that everybody here to chat, anybody watch, if you really want to know if some of these entities, be it Hollywood or just the entertainment world at large, gaming, is going to correct itself, Let's see how they respond when the election is really in full swing. And if some of these guys can help themselves, I don't think they got it in them. I'm calling the bluff on that. I don't think they got it in them. I think it's going to make these fuckers crazy again, like, especially if he wins, right? The, the, just running alone makes, makes it crazy. Now that they've seen that, 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 but if he fucking wins, could you, and I, you know, could, it might be entertaining for us because it's like, damn, we'll get another four years worth of content from these guys because they're not going to be able to help themselves. Oh, Robert De Niro thinks he's going to get rounded up. Uh, <laughs> do, and, and you know what? That's a campaign ad for Donald Trump. He's going to round up all of Hollywood <laughs> actors. Uh, right, yeah. People are like, oh, man, I'm, I'm switching my I vote. <laughs> yeah, where do I vote? <laughs> so that might be Let me get case. some mail-in ballots. <laughs> <laughs> that might do it. That might do it. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I just don't think they got it in them. I'm under the opinion that they don't got it in them. With that being said, I, we have to go to this real quick. Not the video. I'm gonna, we'll, we'll share that here oh, in a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. But I, I got to talk about this right here. And that <laughs> Resident Evil 5, you guys know I'm a big fan of that. Resident Evil being my favorite gaming series, if, if you want to call it that, franchise. Oh, it's totally my favorite. Too. Yeah, I know. Big gamer that Gary is. Yeah. He's uh, he's a big Mila Jovovich is in that one. Yeah. I freaking love it. <laughs> he's a big he's a big uh, a, a, a big, big fan of Resident Evil. But IGN, if not, I mean, from the news article standpoint of gaming, one of the biggest ones, if not the biggest ones. And this is what they went with. Resident Evil 5 simply can't be remade at least not to the standards of Capcom's best work. So the answer is to not remake, but to rewrite. And what this comes from is basically the argument that they make, if you want to see, see the article or problem that people are pointing out is that, well, when you have this uh, spot or this part happening here in a village or uh, that, that it's full of black people and the black people turn zombies. If it be, uh, if it's based in Africa, though, we've seen Resident Evil basically all around the world. And there was never a problem when the most of the zombies were fucking fair and skin. But because Resident Evil depicts them with five, you can't have a bunch of white folk going around shooting, I guess, zombies. And I don't remember this being a problem back then. Maybe it was. I remember uh, it being lightly talked about. 
Um, and people were just making the point that I, I was making. Hey, it was based in the Midwest and nobody had a problem. But now because it's based here, folks seem to have an issue. But I think what is, I don't know why Siri thinks she, I'm talking to her. But uh, I think what makes this especially intriguing is the pushback. That thing is getting ratioed to shit. IGN yeah. has closed down the replies on it because game journals are doing what game journals do. And that may speak, well, no, I don't, as far as the audience, I agree with Gary that I think the audience largely, at least with gaming, I may, maybe not with some of the other ones, maybe they're still lagging, but at least with gaming, I think that they're over this shit. I, I, I do think they got away with a lot there, and I think they were given the benefit of the doubt because it's um, it grew so fast, gaming that is. You have this new market of people that aren't really into it, normies, if you will, that aren't that never were really gamers, but now they play games. Okay, so you could have that wide sort of appeal, but as far as actual gamers, people that are, this is what they do, this is their go-to hobby, I think now they're fucking over this. I I, re I really do think that there's over this and this being game, this whole GamerGate 2.0 thing really does speak to it, but the audience reaction. But you see that disconnect. I mean, it's always been there between critic and customer or consumer or whatever you want to call them. Because IGN puts that out. And if I'm editing over at IGN, I'm like, guys, this is a terrible idea. Why? Maybe if that is your opinion of a, of a person that's uh, contracted to write the article, we ain't putting that shit out. But how ignorant must you be <laughs> if you're like, yeah, run it. Run it. No, they, they were the ones in power, and they thought they were basically the tastemaker, mm. right? IGNs, and and the, uh, they thought they were the tastemakers. And you know and, what? Yeah. For a little while, they were. They were. Absolutely. Ago. They set the tone. Long time Absolutely. Ago. They set the tone, and that's where the corporations kind of followed. Uh, they got really drunk on that power, really drunk on that power. And uh, they've lost it completely because they had no integrity. They, they became activists. It got taken over by activists. And they've never, ever, ever been able to hide their absolute disdain for, for you and I, the fan, the gamer, the, yes. the comic book fan. They cannot hide the disdain because we're the ones who tell you what to like. Well, uh, times have changed, sweetheart. <laughs> we are the media now. So uh, deal with it, and and it's great to watch this just absolute circle jerk implosion of uh, from people who like I don't do they, they must have side jobs. There's no like, way they're no, working full time. No writer for Kotaku's There's... paying paying her rent. No, no you know, way. Uh, uh, they might be doing a, it for free. To be to be honest, to a white guy, she can't be racist towards, um, <laughs> you know, uh, offer fucking shit takes on Kotaku. Yeah. You know? I don't maybe see her, that. Happening. Maybe her cats are paying her rent. I don't know. <laughs> there, there's no way. And I don't know how they're not under. Speaking of fucking Kotaku, man, I don't know. I mean, they could go away at any, any time now. Oh, they they will. None of these sites. Uh, CBR has been all over this on Clownfish because he has a site and he's aware of uh, the ad metrics and stuff. It's like this stuff does not have long to live. Yeah. 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 For sure. Couple like uh, CBR, I know. Who is it? Valnet that has. Like that whole bunch of of sites, I think the root is part of it as well, and uh, which I don't. Yep. Uh, all, all and this. it's a vanity project for some dude. Yeah. Like most, it's a, that's what it is. It's a vanity project for some for some fucking trust fund kid. It sounds well, about right. Trust fund adult. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> that sounds about right. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting, and I do think that this thing is in full swing. Oh no, no, excuse me, it's not in full swing yet. I think the election is going to show us a lot. And I don't see these guys. I don't think they have it in them. I don't think the creatives that are part of Hollywood. I don't think that, uh, a lot of these uh, activist devs or uh, uh, devs posing as activists or other way around. I don't care. It's the same result. I don't think they got it in them. And I for sure, the, the journals, I don't think got it in them. I, I don't think they have it in them to, they, let's say this, they can't help themselves. I, th I do. There's, there's a lesson to be learned. Here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was a painful one for everybody, okay? But sometimes you just want to, uh, you know, if you, if we believe in our values and we believe we we understand, like, how we, we have common sense and we understand how reality works and, and our opponents don't and yeah. they're so detached, it's like, let's give them everything they want. Let's yeah. see how this works out. And yeah. they got it. They got it. They 
fake, borrowed, cheat, cheated, steal, disingenuous, all that shit. They got what they want. And uh, ultimately, we've we've had a good look at that over the last four years. And that's why things are turning around because their ideas were bad. I knew their ideas were bad. We knew we're fans. We understand. Yeah. We understand the comics. Yeah. We understand these movies more than any of the people who own them ever fucking will. And we'll get, you know, there's a scene in uh in Doctor Who uh where Torchwood's gonna open up a portal that's gonna let the fucking Daleks in, you know, and they're like the doctor just puts his hands up in the air and goes, because he's telling them not to do it. And they're like, We're gonna do it. And he's like, okay. Wow. He's like, I'm gonna do it. And he's like, Oh, oh, go, go ahead, do it. Go for it. Go for it. That's where we were at at that point, you know. Uh, and uh, everything went to hell. And what sucks is, uh, sure, we're winning. We lost damn near everything. Like everything we love got destroyed. You know, uh, but they can't take away the old stuff. No. They, they never Still can. There. But like, yeah, all, all the, the the fact that like Star Trek's legacy destroyed, Star Wars legacy destroyed, Marvel, DC, their legacy fucking in tatters like it's not coming back it's yeah. not coming back so it'll open up for something new we gave it a good shot but at least you know we saved the culture just not a lot of the parts of it that we loved <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know I, and I, look I, I get it i'm right there with you I, I remember when i finally stopped my pull list and i was like i can't do this shit anymore i just i just can't do it that was what 20 maybe 20 was 2019 2020 uh where i was like I'm, I'm done and it was weird for me and then I got over it, and I, yeah, I guess starting the Riververse kind of helps with that, uh, ease the pain, if you will. But at least that's that's the positive, right? Is that sure some of the things that we have known to and known to love suck, uh, and that sucks in itself. However, there are these alternatives and people that are very, very, very motivated to get out there, and um, and some people were part of that old guard at one point. Now I won't say old guard that were part of. What we love, we've seen some of them, uh, the Graham Nolans of the world, the uh, Chuck Dixons, Kelly Jones, and the people that have landed on their feet, though being responsible for some of these uh, things that we've we've loved, right? Um, and that's cool. I think that's really cool. So maybe it's yep. not working on Batman, but it is working on something. Uh, and people now more than ever, and they're are, happier. By the way, bingo. Just want to point out, like especially with Graham and Kelly, these are they're, they're happier people <laughs> of being away from that. Yeah, you know, yeah. They're I, I, I had Grandma not too long ago, you know, and he was telling me how he's having the most fun that he's ever had right now, right? Doing what he's doing with Compass Comics, and and that's awesome. And you know, you can make the argument that with their downfall of the the mainstream. It's at least had people consider, though they never would. This is why I've always said that this was Marvel and DC's game to lose. Um, because if they're on top of their game, because they're the first in and the best dressed, nobody stands a chance for the most part. That's just kind of the reality. Unless you're yeah. like a coalition, like an Im image or something, where you just get some of the top dogs that are there and just try to, 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 to make a, a, a swing. Whereas to now... The customers more than ever are like, look, man, I will at least consider something else. Hadn't in the last time, you know, what I mean, the new comic book fans or not new ones, but guys that, man, I haven't read a book since this year. Mm -hmm. But I bought I bought uh, Alpha Core, right, or something like that. And it's like, that's cool. I mean, it speaks to a problem, but that's awesome. At least if you're looking at a glass half full that people are willing to consider other things now. And I think that's a beautiful thing. However, we talk about market correction. We got to go through this real quick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you guys saw us on Tuesday night's main event, we uh, watched it. Shout out to Jay. He sent me the video because I was like, I for sure want to go through this with Gary. But and I, and I don't know if you have any insight before we start pressing play on this as far as what's happening right now with Disney and a potential kind of power struggle, if you will. Uh, um, okay, so I, I, I'm not the financial analyst yeah. kind of guy, but it, it the fact that there is a power struggle is the story. Yeah, I, I personally do not think if if Nelson Peltz and his CFO get on the board, it will fundamentally change Disney. It will create chaos, and I am all for <laughs> chaos. So I want him to win. I don't want to say, but what I said earlier, I am also at the point where I let's give Bob Iger everything he wants 
because I know it's going to fail. Yeah. I know these are bad ideas. I know this like I know the sun is going to rise in the east and set in the west and Rings of Power season two is going to suck. I am that sure. It is a sure thing that Bob Iger's ideas will fucking suck and fail. <laughs> So give him what he wants, and then that hastens, that accelerates the destruction of Disney. Uh, this will actually put it off a little bit. That's, that's a good point. A little bit of a correction, but yeah. you you don't think they're still going to come after your kids? These weirdos. You don't you True. don't think there's going to be some dude with like uh you know mutton chops uh, in a dress <laughs> wanting to like show your daughter around at Disneyland? Like what the hell? No. Yeah, it's a good point. That's a good so. point. But vote Disney. Uh, th- has a video right now if you go to votedisney.com you uh, check it out with this supposed power struggle and who they don't who they want and don't want on the board and some of the things that they say it's only three minutes long some of the things that they say in this is so hilarious so we're gonna watch this together really quickly um and i'll pause it on some of the some of the hilarious points but let's check it out what's the harm of letting activist investor nelson peltz or jay rizzullo have a seat on disney's board the answer is simple. Nice pictures. If they succeed, Disney could suffer the same fate as other great companies that Peltz has previously <laughs> infiltrated, such as GE and DuPont. Nelson Peltz has a long history of attacking companies to the ultimate detriment of shareholder value. His quest also seems more about vanity than a belief in Disney. Pretty sure Wendy's Why else still around. Saw- I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure Wendy's is still around. (laughs) By the way, I I mentioned it yesterday, but they did that little arrow thing down, and that's just like in South Park with Bob Iger's got my stock (laughs) (laughs) now. Fucking funny. (laughs) Somebody just needs to put that in there. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) That's so good. No, it is rich uh, talking about shareholder value being, and this is coming from Disney, right? Uh, This is is hilarious, but yeah, let's continue. Yeah. 500,000 Disney shares over the past six months in the middle of his proxy fight. Plus, he is... Okay. That part was hilarious because what they're trying to discredit him for is getting rid of X amount of shares. Didn't Bob Biger sell a bunch? Uh-huh. 80%. Okay. 80%. And by the way, Wendy's is still around. Wendy's <laughs> was in a lot of trouble, and they turned stuff around. Not that I eat there, but uh, I, I still see a plenty of Wendy's around. Yep. One down Don't the street you? from my house. I'm right down the street. Uh, no, th- this, I love this ad is Nelson Peltz is going to rise the fourth or fifth and fifth Reich through Disney <laughs> and kill us all. <laughs> Round us up in the camps. <laughs> but I, I just thought that was rich. It's like, oh, well, he supposedly sold all his shares. I'm like, wait a minute. The person that you're praising, which they are in a minute, 80% of his. Yeah. I, I What's the problem? Oh, dude, this, this is so fucking desperate. Like, I personally didn't think he was going to win, but I'm like, oh, shit, they're really worried. <laughs> like, like, that's a, if I was a shareholder and I knew nothing about this, I'd be like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Disney, the entertainment company just made this political ad from, you know, from like Bernie Sanders people. <laughs> what the fuck? That's probably who did it. That's probably who yeah. did it. Vote act blue or vote blue, whatever it is. Yeah. No media expertise and no experience in running a global entertainment company powered by creativity. They said I have no media experience. I don't claim to have any. And then there's Jay Rizzullo, a former Disney. Isn't that funny that now all of a sudden they care about credentials? Um, oh, yeah, it's funny. Let's look into theirs. <laughs> you, you know, they don't mention theirs because most people on the board have zero fucking entertainment experience. Oh, and by the way, they don't have a lot of Disney stock either. <laughs> it's funny how that works. Weird. 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 The employee who was passed over for a promotion nearly a decade ago. He hasn't been employed since leaving Disney. And the last time he joined the board of a media company, the stock tanked. What's more, Peltz and Rizzullo have teamed up with another disgruntled former employee, Ike Perlmutter, (laughs) who has his own lengthy record of destructive behavior inside Disney. Perlmutter has a well-documented grudge with Disney CEO Bob Iger. This sort of personal animus in the boardroom is more than disruptive, it can be destructive. Especially at this critical time when despite all of these distractions, Bob Iger and his management team engineered an ambitious plan to build Disney's future. Oh, they have a plan. The comp- that, that's what, that's what that's Now, <laughs> hey guys, don't disrupt us because we're coming up with a plan right now. <laughs> Fucking what? Oh, by the way, uh, Ike Perlmutter holds a grudge. Yeah, he's got a giant fucking... <laughs> axe in the between his shoulder blades yeah. from fucking bob Iger. I'd, yeah. I'd hold a grudge <laughs> yeah and, and, and they're gonna keep talking about this which is what makes it even funnier is how like we have plans 
We're planning we got to do plans. things. We're going to do this thing with Epic Games sometime. <laughs> sometimes. And sometimes. hey, we paid a bunch of money to fool a bunch of normies <laughs> that Taylor Swift's era tour is going to be on D+, which we're going to make no money off of. It was just for optics. Yep, that's it. So they spent $75 million for optics to fool investors. And you know what? It did. Yeah. See, uh, unfortunately, the, the low information investor is becoming as dangerous as the low information voter. Mm. Mm. But for a new era of sustained growth and value creation. The last thing that we need right now is to be distracted in terms of our time, our energy. We by cannot an be distracted, act- grooming children. Do not distract <laughs> our groomation of children, okay? It's a very important mission. I'm like Martin Luther King Iger. He doesn't want to be distracted, Gary. He's don't uh, distract him. <laughs> don't, don't distract this man. Activists in fiscal 2024, they expect cash flow to exceed initial projections and have set a target of three billion dollars in stock repurchases. Okay, so that like again, it's nothing really substantive. It's we got plans. We got plans. <laughs> we got we got plans and projections <laughs> because of the plan. We got speculation. <laughs> yeah, speculation. <laughs> We're, we're, we've got the, the kernel of an idea <laughs> happening, and we don't want to be interrupted. <laughs> oh, man, this shit is so fucking funny. The board also declared a cash dividend of 45 cents per share, an increase of 50% versus the last dividend paid. After a year of significant fixing that made way for a new era of building for growth, the Walt Disney Company has turned like, a... It's so... It's weaselly language. It's new so, era for building for... Like, they, gr- so, they can't say... We have improved. This has become more valuable. We've made. They, th- can't. they can't say any of that. It's we got plans to do something. So we're working towards doing X, Y, and Z. But it's nothing substantive. It's nothing tangible. It's nothing that they can say for the moment. Even the more more recent like um, history of Disney that they have improved in any capacity. They can't possibly say that. So they're. They use this Weasley language to basically say we just got plans. They're the Black Knight in in Monty Python and Holy Grail, dude, with like no arms and no legs. Yeah. What? Yeah. Well, I'm working on improving the situation. <laughs> that's it. That's that's all this whole yeah. shit is, and that's what makes Porter, it so fucking. It is funny. focused on creating lasting long term value. This value is reflected in the recent stock performance, improved operating income, as well as the strategic moves recently made by the company such as the collaboration and equity stake in Epic Games, the upcoming release of Moana 2, Taylor Swift's The Eras Tour coming to Disney+, Plus, and more. Those are going to save this fucking company. Or they, this is part of their plan. You know what? They didn't bring up Star Wars. <laughs> and Marvel. Uh, they, they show Mandalorian a little bit. Yeah. But they didn't bring up not a lot of Marvel. Yeah. Well, it's the, they're banking on Taylor Swift and Moana. Uh, oh, but hey, maybe maybe part of this improvement was firing Bo DeMeo from from X Men '97, <laughs> a week before it comes out. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's interesting. Um, th- that is uh, intriguing. The Disney board is always open to good ideas from engaged shareholders. Are they? Oh, oh, are you now? Are they? <laughs> really? Uh, are you? It's, it's hard to believe it, man. Because uh, because you've been calling half of your shareholders <laughs> bigots. Yeah. I, I but have to. Press X to doubt on that one. I, I doubt that. Yeah. <laughs> Quick glance at Peltz's white paper will reveal a surprising number of questionable proposals that reinforces clear lack of experience in media. Not- okay, I mean, what are they? <laughs> well, give me an example of one. We have examples of them and their proposals coming to fruition uh-huh. that have been fucking terrible. <laughs> I, like if I was like doing a video and I said and I made an accusation like that and and it wasn't put in there, I'd tell my editors, no, we need to put in so, like something, four citations something of, yeah, minimum. Yeah, yeah. If I'm gonna make that kind of accusation, yeah, uh, that none, we get none. <laughs> like give me what? Like if they're so bad, give me one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would help. Not to mention a litany of factual misstatements and quite a few proposals that Disney is already implementing. Nelson Peltz and Jay Rizzullo threatened to jeopardize the incredible progress the company has made since Bob returned as CEO. What progress? Oh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) What fucking progress? What progress? What progress? Regression is progress. Okay. (laughs) Fucking progress. Hey, we're not totally dead. Progress. (laughs) Woo! We've managed to stay afloat since bringing him in. 
uh, and therefore progress. Well, maybe they meant like grooming children, you know. Yeah, maybe for the social causes, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I can see yeah. them making progress there. I guess, they, I guess they made some progress yeah. there. But um, <laughs> hey, that's not that's not political, according to Bob Iger. That's right and wrong. Oh, folks. universal truth. That's huh? right and wrong. Politics is settled on that one. Unbelievable, Un- unfucking believable. Critical moment. We simply cannot let that happen. The choice is clear. Vote Disney. <laughs> And we made fun of this because they call it the, the white card. Vote uh, the white. <laughs> vote, white people. Vote, 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 vote the. <laughs> hey, they had a. Hey, white people are back, Eric. We had a big night at the Oscars. Okay, damn near a clean sweep. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, um, man, shout out to all that progress made by. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> white Bob <Bond> Iger. <laughs> what? Pro- <laughs> that, that shit was funny. What, <laughs> what do you mean? All the, the 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 one profitable movie out of your seven releases last year that eked out a profit that could probably be argued to be breaking even. Okay, potentially that's progress, and that's progress. Yeah, I mean, th- wasn't Disney the biggest loser in the box office this past year? Yes, by far. <laughs> by far, like not as in by far. It Indiana wasn't even Jones close. and the Marvels alone would tank a studio. Would tank a studio and should, yeah, and should. But there's so much, uh, and it's been brought up uh, again. We're seeing it through gaming, but this is happening through all of entertainment, through ESG investment money, and uh, that's been floating this boat for the last four years. And the investment money into streaming now it's drying up mm-hmm. or has completely dried up. And and you know, like I've said before, I love for them to like come to Jesus and go, "We did wrong." We need to change. No, it's the, we are forced to change. We're going to do it begrudgingly, and they're going to do. We're kicking and screaming, and some of them aren't. Some of them are just going to be an idiot setting themselves on fire. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I saw that, and I, I was just, I didn't know what to say, especially at that line with the improvements since since Bob Iger returned, and I'm like, and they show him walking around, I guess, um, one of the parks, and like. What what were the improvements? I, I I don't really. Oh, the progress. Excuse me. Is the well, they managed to make Star Wars boring as fuck. <laughs> How they did that? I mean, I guess it's not. That has to be a I talent. Guess, that could be considered wait, a talent. Wait. Boring as fuck is better than subversive as fuck. True. So okay, <laughs> it's an improvement. That's true. That's very true. No, that was that was an absolute trip, man. But yeah, seeing a power struggle in Disney. Uh, is something that is, I guess, at minimum, in, in very intriguing, um, especially with Ike Perlmutter being um, involved in that because, you know, uh, we know where he tends to lean uh, with his with his uh, yeah. political views, and uh, it, it, I know that you fucking look, they hate that. If you look that. at that guy's life, uh, by the way, self-made man, not, not so, you know, he didn't, uh, and to Bob Iger's credit, self-made man too, but Ike Perlmutter was a poor kid from Israel and, uh, built his way up, at, like it or not, you know. And uh, was he the best? No, he's he's made some horrible decisions for Marvel. Ike Perlmutter was behind the canceling of fucking the Fantastic Four. That's yeah. dumbest fucking decision ever. But you know, on basic stuff, he's right. Yeah. Uh, female action figures don't sell. Yeah. Uh, that bullshit about him not wanting a Black Panther movie is complete bullshit because he tried to get one off the ground with uh, with Wesley Snipes. All right. Uh, he was no, he wasn't down with Captain Marvel, and uh, I guess time has, uh, you know, I'm looking at my fake watch, uh, proven him right. Yeah, yeah, it was because uh, I know he was when I first learned about him. Uh, it was more so through the Toy Biz shit, right? With yep. uh, Marvel and late Toy late Biz 90s. back in the day, best freaking action figure company. Yeah. They ruled. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's. Um, yeah, man, they they don't like that guy. They're not. They're, they don't like no. uh, Perlmutter at no, all. No, they do not because he's a friend of Trump. Yes, yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's the like, main one. He doesn't like Kevin Feige, and he doesn't like because he backed Kevin Feige throughout this whole time. And then Kevin Feige, uh, to get rid of Perlmutter, uh, Iger and Feige were behind calling him a racist. Yeah, while he still worked at the company, while he still ran Marvel. Yeah, yeah. Straight up called him a racist. Unbelievable. Yep. Well, uh, shout out to their progress um, as we go through the through the uh, fan funding here. Appreciate y'all. Maybe they meant YouTube channels for our progress. I made a lot yeah, of progress. Yeah, maybe maybe they're trying to take credit for our progress. Uh, for, oh, okay, I, made, I, I can see that. I can see that. Okay, 
Um, <laughs> maybe. Progress, not perfection. <laughs> like saying in recovery. Shout out to all of you. All right, I'm going to go through some of these super chats while we have Gary um, here again. I appreciate all 3,000 of you hanging out with me. We got Steven uh, DeLeon with a five says, Ripper, Gary, Drinker, and Gun. Oh, I have a break the fucking internet. Uh, Hell Divers 2 stream uh, win. That would be to get get Gary on Hell Divers 2 uh, alone would be pretty fucking, pretty fucking funny. Um, but yeah, that could be some great content out of that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll see. Big Bone with a full month says, "Back at work, so I won't catch the show." Nothing wrong with that. Just wanted to say congrats on another million dollar failure. <laughs> I can't wait for my. I want it all. Keep being great, and if possible, be even greater. Appreciate that. Excuse me, Big Bone. Thank you so much. Uh, creative with a twenty months as Ripper. When are we getting blackface, uh, the accidental racist hero? <laughs> also, when will the fan art contest be international this time? I've wanted to be a part of the previous one, but I can't uh, since I, I live in UK. Well, the way that we word it is, if you are international, do fan art, right? Um, because there have been people that we've done, that have done work with, I I'll say with uh, some of our, even our runner-ups, Right that have ended up getting some commission work with us. It's just with the con it's all legal bullshit, right? It, it's it. It's the advice of people that know what far more about law than I do. It's like, okay, just considering our rules and our rewards, we have to keep it contained. Uh, like front for front facing, like the official submissions as far as that. But I want to see the fan art of everybody international, right? Uh, I really do because uh, obviously we do hire international artists. A lot of our artists up, up to now have been international. So, it's not that we won't bring you on. It's just a part of that that uh, specific deal. So, uh, Big Raj with a two. Appreciate that. We got a five from CJ. Hell, Ripper, hell, Gary. Question for both of you. Will you be at Dallas Fan Expo? Will you do a booth again? I can answer that. We're still looking into it. It's it's. I would say this. They have people, they have requests on their website. You might want to do it. The only issues with us, obviously, we have a massive demand as far as our lines and all that. And, you know, we're trying. It's not as big as Megacon, for example, as far as the it does feel like it that way. But technically, it's not as big as Megacon. No, but it's still pretty big. Yeah, it's still pretty big. So we're trying to fi they're trying to figure out um, internally, like how we can make that make sense. Um, so we'll see. I want to do it. For sure, if we can pull it off, I mean, that's the easiest for all of us to do. It's in Texas, and it, and it makes sense for at least us. So I'll keep you posted. We, we're some months away, so I'll keep you posted. But we are working towards it, I can at least say that much. Um, I'd want to have a presence there regardless. Uh, Game Biter with a two says, Hollywood ain't in a rough spot. It's dead, Jim, says uh, Game Biter with a two. Uh, Cerebus, Burra Cerebus, that's how you say it, with a 50 Australian says, have some Aussie money and get some. 50 Australian ain't cheap, so I appreciate that. Thank you so much for that. We got Goji the King with a five. Those who cancel are feeling the pain of being canceled, and they are throwing temper tantrums. Hell, mm. the Ripperverse, and Gary. Yeah, we've seen some well of said. that. We, we've seen some of that. Uh, the cancel pigs eventually you know that's a perpetual cycle is what i call it because it will come for you in some kind of way um i think that's why especially with the comic book industry you know i've worded it like it's basically a bunch of people holding these ideological guns to each other right it's like a mexican effectively a mexican standoff between each other where it's like at any point we could pull this trigger on each other and i think that's that's just how can you be a a creative under that environment, I have no fucking idea um, because that has to be stressful because you guys are waiting to cancel each other. And eventually you end up doing it. You'll throw each other on the bus when it's all said and done. Oh, yeah. What do, what do pigs do? Like uh, when they hunt pigs here in Texas. Yeah. They don't they don't always pick up the bodies. They just leave them there because the pigs will freaking eat them. Yep. Pigs. Uh, pigs will eat anything. Just That's turns into fertilizer <laughs> and food. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jens Anderson with a 35 months. That, that's a long time. So hell Ripper and Gary. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. We got uh Mark with a five says, uh, what do you guys think of indie animated projects 
like Lack of Daisy 2000's webcomic adaptation or The Amazing Digital Circus, over 280 million views. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen any of that um, stuff. Animations, um, it's interesting, man, uh, especially in this day and age. I know there's technological advancements, but at the end of the day with 2D stuff, that stuff not only takes a while, it's also not cheap. Not cheap. Um, uh, this is why you don't see a whole lot of indie stuff in that in that space. They tend to trend towards live action just because of the sheer amount of time and money. You know, I, I can speak from from experience with that. Our live action trailer costs a fraction of what it costs to even do a much shorter, like the Ice on One animation, uh, or excuse me, Ice on Two animation, or even the Alpha Core animation. Like uh, though that was you know built internally, more internally than what the Ice on Two was. It's still like that's how it's, the cost is the cost, man. So if there are independent people that are able to somehow get over that hurdle there, much respect to them, but I haven't seen it. So hopefully they're doing well with it. Yep. Uh, Philip with a 10 says, you guys called it first. Now the others are waking up. Some folks are very slow. True. Um, uh, Cerberus with a five cultures downstream from law not the other way around. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Um, the reason being is because you don't get the law without the cultural change, especially in your quote unquote democ democratic. And I use that term. I hate it because it sucks um, more society and, 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 and cultures, right? When it becomes politically expedient is when it becomes socially uh, expedient uh, to do things. I mean, you, and the government shows you that and how definitely the American government and how they are so quick to strike when the cultural iron is hot. Uh, if you will, with some form of legislation. We, we talk about government being so, so um, inefficient and slow. But when it, when some shit go down, you get something like the Patriot Act or something, they can do some, fa they can do that shit quick, right? They can do wow. it quick. yeah, crazy. Uh, how, how fast and efficient they can move, but that's because culturally and societally, it's, it's uh, uh that's the, the thing to do and they can get away with it, right? So it's, it's always the other way around. It's culture is on the, on the um on the downstream of, yeah it's reactionary yeah you can't, you well, can't excuse you me can't politics on a downstream like politics yeah. corporatism our government is all reaction reactionary yeah. to what's going on with the culture at a time and the big difference since 2016 especially in the art entertainment world is they were going against the market they were literally going against the trends that the market was dictating because yeah. that's what happens yeah. uh hollywood is where where trends go to die where, where art comes from, I hate to say it, from like street level. It comes from street level. It comes from you. Yeah. It comes from the fans. Yeah. Uh, that's that's where new that's where new waves in art come from. Uh, it rises up and then uh, it gets gobbled up by the corporation and then overused and then something else new comes in. The big difference is something else was happening. There was a a a rebellion which always happens in art. There was a cycle and they not only resisted it. They denied it. Oh yeah, crushed it, and then they lost a bunch of fucking money. <laughs> yep. So <clears throat> that's putting it perfectly. Yep. Uh, CJ with a five. I'm uh, waiting for Gavin McGinnis to start talking about video games and uh, how important it is to talk about. Oh uh, man, there'll be some people that would hop on that train. Stitch with uh, six months becoming a member says, "Congrats, Team Riververse, for the success of Yiver. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. We got Peter with a ten. Canadian says, "Telling my generation." To walk away from video games is like telling Gen X to stop watching uh, MTV or listen to rock music. Yeah, good luck. Uh huh. Damn straight. Good luck on that. Uh, bucket of semen. What the fuck? Yeah, that's the guy's name. Uh, become an Ultra Mac. At least, I guess, thank you. Uh, Josh with a 10. Appreciate that. <laughs> Defendo 99 with a 10 says uh, Trump should campaign or replacing journalists with AI. Uh, CJ with a 5 says Gary. Would now you notice? Yeah. Uh, CJ with a five says, Gary, now that you're a megastar, uh, on Piers Morgan, I'm glad you still have the time for us nerds is what he says. I am not a megastar. <laughs> it was nice to get the word out on Piers Morgan. And I think, you know, if er Eric's been on Fox news, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, Eric gets retweeted by Elon. That's uh, and nasty. I think, uh, but you're right. Like, don't. I think that's what happened to a lot of those pundits, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of those pundits got put into that sphere and um, I've had good relations with people with the daily wire and I've had not so good relations. And I will say that the daily wire comes off as pompous and pretentious 
and that is fucking Hollywood, and they really need to back the hell off of that if they really want to make changes, like real changes. Mm. That mm. would that would be my unsolicited advice. Uh, and and always and, and always talk to the chat as much as you humanly can. <clears throat> That's why we do these meetups. You got to keep talking to the audience because we are the audience mm -hmm. we're not above them Absolutely. we're not above them and that's what matt walsh looks like right now and he's just like well you will get my informed opinion and then like treating all his his audience or the audience that we all share like a fucking bunch but, of npcs yeah that's what that's what the fucking left does fuck yep. that shit yep that's that's facts man spider bro two months says what's up ripper and erotic you should definitely reach out to clownfish tv for an episode they've definitely have uh, inside details of the industry I'm not against having him. Uh, not at all. Say. I know Neon is not the biggest person on live streaming live for stream, good yeah. reason. He's also a busy man. Yeah. Uh, I do chat with him on, on DMs once in a while. Uh, very good man. I would love to have him back on. Absolutely. And you should too. They they, yeah. uh, they know their shit. They yeah. really do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Uh, Bearded Gamer with a 26 month says, Hell excited for Yari number one. I'm currently rereading Ice on one and two and Alpha Core. Oh, shout out. You are an inspiration, Eric. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, you know, purchasing those books, and I can't wait for you to get Yara, man. Thank you so much. Brock is with a two. Says, uh, where am I at? Where am I at? Moved up on me. <clears throat> uh, says, I want that man bun song. Y'all know how to get it. <laughs> uh, Javi, nobody with a two says, uh, all pets, pelts has to do is pull up the Disney stock chart. <laughs> East Coast Toasty Boy with a two said Bob's right, uh, right v wrong, and pedophilia is wrong. That's that's very true. It is. RP with a two says which is next? I some three or Gooding? Gooding comes out next. That's the next book. Um, we released that right after uh, with Mike Barron. We released that right after uh, Yaira that will go up for pre order. Crit Nature with a two months uh, being an Ultra Mac. Thank you so much. Says, hell, you guys, Eric, I uh, was wondering if you ever went to Anarchapulco. Oh, we rocked Anarchapulco like three years straight. Uh, so, yeah, I, I've been there as a speaker. I've been there with the band uh, plenty of times. We, we've rocked that place. Uh, hell, the Lord with the 10 months says, congratulations on outstanding success. Thank you, hell, the Lord, man. I appreciate everything you do, certainly for our community. Uh, says, uh, the Riververse is the biggest thing in comics, and it's not even close. Gary's close to one million. He is She's right there. Uh, Joel Reekin with a one month says, hell the river verse. Thank you. We got Corey with a five says I was today years old when I discovered Dragon Ball is a $24 billion franchise. Let's hope Toriyama's legacy doesn't go the way of Star Wars. Well, if he keeps it out of the West, he'll be fine out of the hands of the West. He'll be fine. Largely, um, HDK bass player with a five says payday, uh, going back to order those cards in another cover. Let's get to the 4 million release the Eric sketch. Let's go, Yaira statue. Yes, if at two million, we will do a statue. We can guarantee you that. Appreciate that. Defendo ninety nine with a five says uh, Gary should challenge uh, Matt Walsh to a one v one in video games. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, uh, Scott with forty months says uh, congratulations on the continued success. Can't wait for more content. Appreciate that. We got Paul with a five. Video games and comics are for children. That's what he's using it in quote. Also, we have to stop these leftists from indoctrinating our children. That's always been the conundrum that they've been in, right? It's um, they, it's like it's funny because they'll demonize something, say that you're foolish for participating in it, like they did with myself in comics for a long time, and then they they sit there with their thumb up their ass, and then they wonder why like an entire generation of fucking people, uh, don't give a fuck about what it is that they're that they're saying because they have no cultural imprint, and I'm like the fuck have you been doing for the last several decades like how do you think we got to this point it's because of your neglect and often it's just you you you've down talked a lot of these different uh definitely in the arts and entertainment industries as you wrote it off as if it was just pointless uh usagi with a five says please check the link for the original anime i sent you and gary it's a new anime and it looks fire shout out to maury for the end song also okay uh, Gemini with a 10 says, hey, hope y'all uh, are well. I know y'all do comics, but I've been working in fiction through novels. Do you think there is a market for good indie novels? I don't see why not. Uh, well, then having a woke message, thank you both. I don't see why not. I think with anything entertainment right now, if this mind virus has 
is it as infectious as we believe that it is, there's going to be a demand for all of it for the most part. Um, so give it a shot. Uh, Sel- Celtic, what's up, man? It says uh, with a two, backwards live win. Well, backwards is returning. We're sitting on a couple of music videos. One's actually being edited right now. Um, and yeah, I can't wait for y'all to get some more music. And then we have Grateful Dog with a five months. So appreciate that. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Gary, man, you got anything that you're working on right now? We know that you're seeing the American Society of Magical Negroes, uh, which uh, you should get some great content out of. But outside of seeing that uh, 10 out of 10 movie, what else do you have going on? Oh, well, we got uh, Clifton Duncan coming on Ooh, Friday night. Baby. Tights, yeah, and he'll out. be uh, talking about his one man Thomas Soul show, which should be cool. And he'll be talking about uh, the American Society of Magical News. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I've got a joke for the video, too. I'm going to need to, you need your help. You need me? I got you. I got you. I got you. Give me up. I got but, you. Um, Whatever you need. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, we're working on a couple videos over the weekend so you should see something soon i know it's been like a week sorry but yeah we're working on a couple videos go see the gentleman on netflix uh if you don't like netflix find it you know find be creative find another way to see it it will be the best show especially if you like guy Ritchie and that kind of like crime drama stuff lock stock two smoke barrels you'll freaking love this you'll love the gentleman and uh yeah just uh gonna keep on keep on grooving and then uh, hopefully Write a song for Dan, maybe in the next week or two. Oh, that is going to be glorious. I drink, therefore I something, uh, with a $50, by the way. And he says, uh, let me go to Fan Funny real quick. Um, he, Oh, I, I drink, therefore I am is what it is. 50 says, question, is there an idea, plan, or even a thought to create a tabletop or role-playing universe for the Riververse because we need a new universe that is not trash. If you need ideas, I have a draft for a superhero game that could be skinned to whatever. We've talked about it uh, internally. There's some guys that are uh, work within the company that are that they're really tapped in. I'm not as tapped in. I know it's a big market. And look, this is the Riververse. So if there is a market for it that floats right into uh, ours, We'll, we'll entertain it, you know, much like we did our animations and much like we're doing all the other cool stuff that we're doing. So I appreciate that 50, and it, it has absolutely been a thought um, for sure. Uh, Eric, uh, excuse me, East Coast Toasty Boy with a five, back in the old days, 19s, uh, and back to uh, 1800s and such, adults thought kids reading books was a waste of time and childish. Oh, how it changes. Uh, Paquette with a five says, how does it feel to have another million-dollar failure? feels great, actually. Uh, this is Hail the Riververse. Uh, waiting for my Yaira copy. Uh, subscribe to Neurotic Man Buns or Baguettes. Uh, yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, shout out, Dan. I see you in the chat there. But look, man, it's been a wonderful show. Of course, Gary, man, whenever we can get you here, we love to have you here. I love collaborating with you. It's always fun, man. And I look forward to, you know, big shout out to Clip Duncan. Everybody know I have that man, is uh, how valuable he is to me. So, I'm very. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I, I think Clifton's gonna rock yeah, it, dude. I yeah. think it'll be, it'll be awesome. It's, I can't wait to see what he's working on there, and I'm um, looking forward to having him, uh, seeing him chat about on FNT uh, tomorrow. So y'all subscribe, of course, to my man's Gary if you have not already. Cheers. Most of you probably have, but if you have not, go subscribe there. And uh, well, let me get through. Thanks this. for having me on, man. Dude, appreciate you. Anytime, you know, it, anytime. Congrats, by the way. If uh, God, all of the, you know, you wouldn't be succeeding if it wasn't for all that success. <laughs> so they tell me, uh, right. so they, so they tell me, man, but now I appreciate you having me and on the way out with this file from Rover. Congrats on the $4 million campaign. Can't wait for the ribbon silverback hot tub stream at 10 million. I, I never agreed to that. Never agreed to that. Uh, but I will take us getting 10 million for sure. So appreciate y'all. Thank you so much again. Appreciate you, Gary, for joining me uh, here. As always, you can go to uh, my website, ericdjuly.com, says 4 Go just hit 4 whatever it may be, to go listen in on the episodes. We do leave our guest episodes live, so go check those out uh, if you have not already. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate the support for Yaira, and until next time, y'all be easy. Peace out. Do it for today's episode of For Canon's Sake. Whether you watched us live, 
or listened on wherever you get your podcast. We appreciate you. Be sure to follow us on all forms of social media and get more information at forcanonsake.com. We'll see you next time, and y'all be easy.